Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today I have my fine assistant with me. Hi. Miss Kara Erickson. And she can cook y'all. Good stuff. We've been having a blast with this. This is our second episode, third class, third class. and it's our holiday class mm -hmm. where we have, we were going to cook a turkey, but we have ham, cornbread dressing, rice dressing. We're doing some mimosa, green bean casserole, so much good stuff. Y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. Sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live And it sure feels fine Alright y'all this is our third class and we really got some cool stuff from y'all. It's the holiday season mm -hmm. and uh, we have a sponsor now. We have Friend Settlement Sausage as our sponsor for the last four classes. Mm -hmm. um, love those guys. Brad Dixon owns it, been having it for two and a half years. Um, they've been around forever. You can get their sausage at all of the grocery stores around here. Mm -hmm. uh, really cool stuff. He was telling me the green onion sausage is one of the most popular. And mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna talk yeah. later, cause he's brought some cool stuff too. He's got the oh, roast. I'm excited. And um, we'll get to talk with him. So let's start off with our drink. We done a mimosa, okay. so give us a little down low uh, well, on mimosa. It is, it is the holiday season, so we gotta have champagne. We gotta, we gotta mm -hmm. celebrate here. I've been celebrating a little too much, obviously. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a mimosa is really easy. So we, we made a bellini in an earlier class and it's basically the same recipe as a bellini and it's just kind of to taste. You know, if you like a little bit more, you know, if you like to be a little boozier, you know, if it's that kind of holiday, then you can add a little more or if you'd rather have a little more sweetness, then you're going to add a little bit more orange juice. But I'm just going to go ahead and add the orange juice in first and I have a little ice in here because um, our champagne is not very cold. So I just have this regular orange juice and then I'm just going to pour the champagne down the side. Well let me tell you a little bit about mimosa. Okay. It's a cocktail composed of champagne or other sparkling mm -hmm. wine and chilled citrus juice, usually orange juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's named for a yellow flowered mimosa plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the variations, there's a couple. Yeah. It's the Buck's Fizz, invented in 1921 in London, mm -hmm. made using twice as much champagne as OJ. Oh, that's for those, you know, that's rough the, holidays. That's the know, fizz that's part. The, yeah. Then the, <laughs> there's the poinsettia, mm -hmm. uh, which is cranberry juice with champagne. That sounds really good. The Lamosa is Limosa. lemonade with champagne. Okay. Then there's the Vermosa, is apple cider with champagne. Vermosa. Usually served okay. in Vermont too. I was wondering where they got that. Then there's the okay. Flirtini. It's <laughs> pineapple juice, champagne, and vodka. And now, they're they, just, now they're just making stuff up. They kicked it up. And then <laughs> the, the Megamosa. <laughs> that's equal oh, wow. parts of champagne and grapefruit juice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right. that's your little mimosa there. Good now gracious. we have some snacks here since it's the holiday season. Right. We gave all the folks out there some peanuts and some little smokies. Mm -hmm. And um, and these are different. This is a different look for a little smoky. It is. It is. And and most of the time the little smoky is uh, toothpicked. Right. Right. So I seen these scoops. I said, well, hey, we put a little Parmesan cheese mm -hmm. on some of these smokies, and well, I think it'll be that pretty makes neat. Anything a party. Mm -hmm. You're right. So I, I I did some Wikipedia on smokies, and the only thing I could pick up was Hillshire Farms. Okay. Hillshire Farm was founded in 1934, mm -hmm. and then it was purchased by Sara Lee Corporation in 71. Okay. Okay. Uh, Friedrich Berger started the business. He was born in Austria, 04, died in 88. He, it, the whole company was started in New London, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Okay, due to the popularity of the business, Sara Lee spun off two companies. They started Hearshaw Brands, Sara Lee, mm -hmm. in 
and that's in 2012. And in 2014, Tyson Foods bought the Hillshire Farm, so oh, okay. undoubtedly they're doing pretty good. I would think so. Okay. I would think so. We're coming up with some good stuff. Y'all hang on. They're going to eat some little Smokies, and uh, we're going to start cooking. All right. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com. The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Benson Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, Come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're, You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. Man, we've been cooking some good stuff. I know. Now, you said you was going to taste some of this rice I dressing. Am. I am. Now, um. I have grown to love it. The more I've had it down here, I, I really enjoy it. It's, um, it's a staple, really, I would say, a rice dressing. And, and that's one of the holiday things that people mm. have during the year and you know some of these other things we don't get cornbread dressing turkey some of them things like that you'd only get once a year once a year that's good you can taste the onion in it yeah it's, it's very savory that's really it. good that's now good. all right y'all this is the green bean casserole i'm gonna let you start off with this telling okay. folks what we got started here all right well we got two pounds of ground meat and to that we've added a medium onion and we've just kind of chopped it into little into little pieces and we've seasoned the ground meat with a little bit of uncle larry's give a little kick a little spice and it's already drained it is it is and again this you know this has been made a little bit before so this the good thing about ground meat is you can make it the night before if you have people coming over so we just kind of got it going now tell them the rest of the ingredients and I'm going to give them a down low on uh, where this comes okay. from. Okay, all right. So we're just going to add to that two tablespoons of Worcestershire. We have some roasted red peppers. They look a little yellow. I thought I was colorblind. Yellow and red. But, and but that's going to give us some nice color. Um, we have some regular cream of mushroom soup. We have some golden mushroom soup. And then we got some mushroom steak sauce which you normally put on top of the steak, but we're gonna add that to the green bean casserole and of course, some canned green beans. Okay, y'all, um, let me tell you a little bit about the green bean casserole. It's a dish consisting of green beans, cream of mushroom, and French fried onions. And we have all those ingredients, mm -hmm. okay? This recipe was created in 1955 by Mrs. Dorcas Riley of Campbell Soup Company. And they stuck it on the back of the cream of mushroom cans and it went crazy. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Campbell's cream of mushroom soup was created in 1934. Mm -hmm. um, Campbell's reported that 
their recipe online for this is viewed over four million times each Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. So I can everybody's imagine. going on and Everybody finding. Everybody likes okay? this, yeah. But let me tell you the cool. I've been eating this green bean casserole since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Yeah. So and I'm thinking, I somehow it, I thought it was kid food or something. You know, it's, it don't have enough bite. So this recipe is something that I created, the adult version. So instead of two cream of mushrooms, I put the golden mushroom. Mm -hmm. Then this, the mushroom steak sauce. So it's when you threw, it's not white. Yeah. It's actually I can see it's going to be a nice brownish color. And yeah. and you it know has I don't normally meat. I don't normally like cream of mushroom, but this just looks well, really good. This is going to be well, really good, really savory. <laughs> It, it's something unique because it, it to me it gives a little more adult flavor to it and there's more you can do y'all you can get down with it if you want to go straight up adult um, you can put some jalapenos oh, you wow. can add some bacon on top you mm -hmm. can put more cheese in it it's I was um gonna say cheese it's it's versatile it's a very versatile recipe but they gave you the basics I love Miss Doris Riley from Campbell mm -hmm. but um, we had to make it better because oh, yeah. it, what year 1955 well they didn't have all this good stuff you know oh no no they, indeed they just wanted you to start and buying that cream of mushroom see that's, that's the kicker too right that's there. that that flavor in there that roasted pepper that's good in just about anything exactly that's just that exactly. gives so much flavor to it and look at the color you know you think about green bean casserole and it's just is gray and this is this is so colorful and then you add those fried onions to the top and and what we've had in there is the I put about two tablespoons of Uncle Larry's mm -hmm. in the ground meat. Okay, mm -hmm. now the last thing you want to do before you go topping it is taste one more time for a little salt and pepper. You might want to put a little cayenne. You might want to do a little. You know, a you can do a little. In there maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and so. It, it's um, it's room for you to make it better out mm -hmm. there. You can even do more than this, you know, if you want to do something else to it. Oh, yeah. So we just got the canned green beans. Drained. Yep, they are drained. They've been draining in this little bowl here. And we're just going to kind of mix those in a little bit before we put them into our pot. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add, oh, yeah. That's the secret okay. Chinese ingredient. Ah. Not even from China. Ah. Okay. Ancient Chinese secret, huh? Exactly. All right. Okay, y'all. She's going to stir it up. Start putting it together. We're going to get it in the pan. And we're going to get to taste some in a second. And let me tell you, we got something even better. We got your dessert coming. Tell them what we're doing. Ooh, we are going to do some sweet mm -hmm. potato casserole. Tastes like a dessert, but since we call it a casserole, we don't feel guilty about it. So y'all hang on. Kara, that last segment was the bomb right there. I'm going to tell you, that pork roast. Oh, that pork roast looks so pretty. So you're getting to taste I some know, of the pork roast I've been right waiting. now. I was, I was waiting on that. And she's got some pork roast she's tasting, a little bit of that ham, and uh, the cornbread dressing. Mm -hmm. And um, that that pork roast. That's I'm, so good. I'm putting oh my, my name on that for this next holiday, y'all. Prince Settlement Sausage got it going mm -hmm. on. Now, well, that's um, excellent. I want to say a little something about the cornbread dressing All while right. you checking it out over there um, the names for the dressing go way back to Roman times and uh, and they look back on this Wikipedia tells you this in in, in uh, 1390 which was a little ways back it was called farce in 1538 it was called stuffing mm -hmm. okay in 1688 it was called force meat and then in, I know just forcing <laughs> it in that turkey and oh, there you goodness go it's gracious and uh, it was called dressing in 1850, so mm -hmm. that's when it got its regular old name. But um, that's a whole lot more pleasant of a name than forced meat. Exactly. Wow. Um, stovetop stuffing started in 1972. Okay. okay. And um, Kraft Heinz now owns the brand, and they still sell over 60 million boxes at Thanksgiving mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of boxes. I tell you what, though, there's nothing like homemade, though. Oh no! You know, there's no. nothing like homemade. Speaking of homemade, mm -hmm. tell them what we're cooking now. Well, now we're cooking rice dressing, and it's funny. I would never had rice dressing until I moved down here. Y'all just had dirty never, rice. Uh, we we had dirty rice. That's what we called it. Was dirty rice. It's close. It's it, so close. It is. It's, it is. So 
Uh, we just have some ground beef here, and we're going to cook it and drain it, which we've already done. This is an easy Magic recipe TV. right here. This one's very easy. This Be is pretty easy. Because my wife done most of the work for us, too, because the meat Thank was goodness. already browned. Thank goodness. <laughs> we already browned the onions. Mm -hmm. And this is three pounds. Um, this is just the onions, and they're nice and diced. And there's some green peppers in there as well. So, I'm just going to mix that in. And these were browned, of course, in butter. What other way would you I want know, to brown them? You can't brown them any other way. Mm -hmm. So these are just brown in butter. So we're just going to let them get acquainted. So two parts of this has already been done. Yes. And now we just into the mixing part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, and it kind of just lets you know that you can, you know, do it early. So that way you can, you know, spend the time with your family for the holidays, which is what it's all about. Yeah, you invite all the family over the day before and let them do all the work. Send them home. <laughs> you can go to bed there you and go. then wake up the next morning and all the hard work's done. All right, so, and I don't know if I mentioned there's some uh, green bell peppers in there as well, of course. And now we got two cans of, this is just beef gravy. And we're going to add that in as well. And and I think I forgot to mention, we, we season the meat with a little bit of Uncle Larry's and then there's going to be a little bit of Uncle Larry's in the gravy because, you know, because Cajun, you know. And if you don't have Uncle Larry's, Cajun seasoning will work. Mm -hmm. Any Cajun seasoning, but Uncle Larry's yeah. makes it a little bit better. <laughs> it does. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. I smell it now. I know the onions. The onions smell so nice. And you can see it's kind of a it's kind of a wet mixture, but the rice is going to absorb some of this liquid. So mixing it all in there and browning it all in there and putting the rice all in there, you basically it's when you put rice. it in the oven, there you go. You can and if you put it in like a cast iron, you know you don't have to to dirty up any more pots. You just go straight from the fire to the oven and and you're good to go. Once again, that's less to clean. Yep, right. More time with your family. There we go. So also salt and pepper to taste, of course. And this is just two cups of cooked rice. That would be that's long gonna, grain. That's long grain rice. And it's just going to come in here in our little festive yes, indeed. fine china here. Now, it since it's the holiday. holiday season. Absolutely. We have the Halloween. There you go. So, and again, this rice has been cooked beforehand, which again, just kind of lets you know, you can cook this beforehand, you know, and it's just coming together just super easy. You know, you heat it through. So, for the folks at home, the next thing you're going to do, once you get it all mixed up, mm -hmm. you'll be putting it in the pan, and then we'll yep. be putting it in the oven, and when y'all come back, we're going to have the finished product, so y'all hang on now. All right, Carol, we down to the good stuff now, but uh, you said you was going to taste that I am. green bean casserole. I now, like I said, I'm not normally a fan, so I have a little bit of reservations, but this looks really good. It's the adult version, I like to call it, but kids can have it too. It's not hot or anything. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not from that same ingredient. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is really good. I would eat this. Cool. And I'm pretty cool. picky. That's very good. Awesome. Well, now we go on to uh, one of your favorites. Well, mm -hmm. where does this... Where does this come from? Is that a family recipe or something y'all started doing? This was um, my husband's grandmother's recipe, and she used to make it every holiday. And I absolutely loved it because it is more like a dessert, but it doesn't, you know, you serve it when you serve the rest of the food, so you still get to have dessert. So, you oh, know, wow. if you get so a double dose of the sweetness, sweet potato crunch. And all it is, it's sweet potatoes, but it has a praline pecan topping. So I'm just going to start with the filling and I just took a can of sweet potatoes, one of the bigger cans of sweet potatoes and drained out some of the syrup and I've mashed it with this handy dandy potato masher. And then to this I'm going to add one cup of white sugar because sweet potatoes are just not sweet enough. <laughs> And then we're going to kind of mix that in a little bit. I like the way you said uh, you can use a blender, but if you use a fork or a masher, it's a little more rustic. It is. It is a little bit more rustic. And I, I don't personally like to dirty up, you know, uh, the beaters. If the you beaters, don't you need know, That's for the dessert. So <laughs> this makes it feel less like a dessert. More like a there we go. So, and then to that, I'm going to add two eggs. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add those in. And these are just room temperature eggs. I find that the room temperature eggs tend to mix in just a little bit better. I hear that too. When you're baking, you want it at room temperature right. and the brown eggs also because it's, um, oh, okay. that's I, what they like. Okay. So I'm just going to mix this in and the eggs are going to be kind of a binding and it's going to hold this together. So when you cut it, you can actually cut it, you know, into squares. I like it. I like it. So this is the filling part. Mm -hmm. This is the filling. And then I'm going to add a stick or half cup of butter to that. So this is going to be pretty liquidy. I like it. And then a half cup of milk. And you can use whole milk. I use whole milk. You can go skim. You can go skim if you want to, but, but this is the holidays. We don't want to do that. So, yeah. or you can use evaporated milk. So whatever you can find. And if you want to get fancy, I'm sure you can do half and half. Yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> so this is all you really have to do with this. And then you're going to go ahead and put this into a greased 9 by 13 inch baking dish. And so you, you put that greased. in now? Mm -hmm. We're going to put this in first. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit liquid and that's okay. Because it is going to cook down. And like I said, those eggs are going to bind it together. So we're going to put this in first and make sure you grease your pan because this is an absolute nightmare to try to get out of an ungreased Oh, I can pan. imagine. Oh, yes. Let I've me have that. that. Thank you so much. All right, now for the topping, this is just going to be a pecan praline topping. So it basically has all the ingredients for pecan pralines except we're adding flour. So I'm just going to take a stick or actually a third of a cup of butter. Uh-huh. Now, I'm just going to kind of mash it with my hands and honestly, you really got to get in here with your hands with this because you really want to make it nice and crumbly because we're going to sprinkle it over the top. Ah. I have a cup of brown sugar. Jumps right on out of there. Falls right on in there. <laughs> this is a cup of flour and I've added some cinnamon to it because we want a little bit of cinnamon flavor. All right. And I, and I forgot to say to mention, I did add um, a teaspoon of salt in okay. this as well. Okay. Most so. most uh, bakers do. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to get in with my hands. I'm going to start smushing this together. And I put in the recipe, if you want it to be a little bit more crispy and tender, you can add less flour. It's completely up to you, to your taste. But when you have a cup of flour in there, it makes a nice tall topping. And then I have some Lafayette pecans. What? Yes, indeed. Well, while you're mixing all this, I did a little research for you. All right. Uh, sweet potatoes, the history dates back to 2500 BC. Mm -hmm. They come from South Africa and the Caribbean. Okay. Now okay. skip a few years and they were brought to Europe by Christopher Columbus and then traveled to Africa from there. Uh, most sweet potatoes have brown or orange skin, but there are other varieties, mm -hmm. purple, yellow, and red. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet but this is the coolest thing. Sweet potatoes are cured to improve storage, flavor, and nutrition. And the proper curing, uh, you allow the sweet potato to sit on the ground for three to four hours. Okay. okay? And then it's stored at 85 to 90 degrees with 95% humidity. Oh, well, that's every summer here from five to 14 right. days. Okay. Now, once you've cured them, they can go in the freezer, uh, in the cooler for 55 degrees for up to 13 months. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's why we them, have them all. The eyes on them, okay. That's why we have them all year now because they're stored. I tried a, stored. an unusual sweet potato not too long ago. I tried a Japanese sweet potato and it's, it's actually white. It's not orange and wow. it's sweeter than that type of sweet potato. So I can just imagine what it would do in this kind of casserole. So now's the fancy part. Here's the here's the fancy schmancy part. So we're gonna go ahead and just take this topping and we're gonna sprinkle it over the top. And just, you know, as even as you want it. And like I said, it's gonna it's gonna brown up this this um, brown sugar is gonna melt and that flour is, you know, going to stay there and it's going to make that nice little topping on top. Gotcha. And it's and so good. Now you telling me uh, you put this in the oven and start mm -hmm. baking it at 350. 350 degrees, about 40 to 50 minutes. And when it comes out, it's going to be jiggly and it's going to continue to cook as you let it rest. 
Well, I'll tell but you what. But it's real hard not to, to taste it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, you got it looking good. She's gonna finish this. We're gonna bring out one to taste, and y'all hang on. It's gonna get better. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. Man, I had a good time doing I this. Know. This is I this has really holidays. been good. Everybody's out there eating, loving it. It's, it's like uh, we should be exchanging gifts or something, you know. It's, or doing some fireworks or something, you know. <laughs> yes, or indeed. hiding some eggs or. Uh, well, I'm gonna expect something for Christmas. Door to door, door trick or treating there or something. You go. <laughs> so yes, I gotta try this. I gotta try okay. this. I've been right. smelling it and smelling it. So well, let me know what you think. So it's like a dessert, isn't it? It is. So you can kind of, you know, you kind of fudge a little bit. You know, you eat this during the entree and you still get dessert and not feel quite as guilty about it. <laughs> well, y'all, I think he's going to keep, <laughs> he's just going to keep eating. I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking and we will see you guys next week.